Hello, my name is Wade Nimmer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. This last year, I had the opportunity, actually privileged, to be the chairman of the Southern California Nevada Pets, President-Elect Training Seminars, or PETS. Um, and this time also was the 40th anniversary for, uh, for PETS itself. Now, President-Elect Training Seminars, or PETS, is required by Rotary International. In other words, every president, the 35,000 presidents around the world, actually have to attend pets in order for them to qualify to serve as a president of their Rotary Clubs. At the same uh, event, I had the privilege and opportunity to catch up to Jim Vandenberg. Now, Jim was the originator. It was his idea. He was governor-elect back in 1978, and his idea and vision was to actually create this training for all of his presidents in his district, which he then shared with his classmates and it became then accepted by all five others of his uh, classmates, and they actually initiated and did the very first pets in 1978 in the Southern California area. Now, the opportunity for me 40 years ago was that there are two of them still left, uh, still surviving. We had Jim and we had Roy Smith. And I wanted to get, give you a little bit of, uh, I would say, background, so I had the opportunity to actually interview them for this show. Uh, this is the footage that you'll be seeing, so please enjoy because this is going to be a, a rare speak or look into history itself. Thank you. I had the good fortune of uh, moving to the city of Fullerton in 1950. I was working uh, uh, setting pins at the bowling alley <laughs> and hitchhiking uh, to the country club uh, in Caddy. Great, uh, great. I had the good fortune of uh, meeting my wife uh, at that time. She was uh, 15 and I was 16. And uh, we went into business uh, together in 1961 in the city of Brea. Uh, 1962, I was invited to join Rotary uh, by Don McBride. Uh, there were 16 members in the club. 1967, I had the good fortune of serving as president. Uh, there were 41 members in the club at that time. Um, my, my background is one in which uh, I would uh, take pride in as a creative thinker, a problem solver. Give me a problem and I'm going to try to solve it. <laughs> so good. that's pretty much uh, uh, starting a uh, printing business with $250 and a hope and a dream. Wow. <laughs> uh, 40 years later, we had uh, 55 employees and uh, we were doing brochures, booklets, catalogs, mm -hmm. uh, and annual reports. Mm -hmm. Everything that's happened in our business life mm -hmm. uh, in our rotary life. Okay. And without uh, her support, believe me, it never would have happened. Roy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm the youngest of uh, seven children. Um, mother had uh, had me at home. I was born in Monrovia, California, and lived there until uh, we moved to Hemet in 1966. Um, I uh, grew up in a family where uh, it was very hard because uh, my parents lost everything when the Depression hit. Um, another thing, too, is uh, I remember quite well about uh, Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. And um, things were difficult for us. And one of the hardest things as a, a relatively young child in grammar school, um, our Japanese friends were taken from their homes and put in an internment camp, which was in the parking lot of the Santa Anita racetrack. And we could not understand that. These are students that we went to school with every day. And so that was, that was pretty tough. I went to work at the telephone company and started out as a cable splicers helper and worked my way up to a superintendent. Um, this is a second marriage for us. Uh, my wife, Millie's 
uh, husband died of cancer at the age of 29, and left her with four children under the age of six. And my wife uh, took off and left me with two children, uh, a baby that was 15 months old. And uh, luckily, I could call my mother on the telephone, and she could talk me through ways of uh, how to run the washing machine, <laughs> uh, different meals that I could prepare. Okay. And um, then we met through uh, the wives of one of the fellows that I worked with. She lived in Sierra Madre. And so uh, after a couple of attempts, and she uh, wasn't interested, she agreed to uh, a blind date. So we had three dates alone, and then from then on, the six kids went with us. Now one of the wonderful things about Millie is that she had the ability to love equally, yours, mine, and ours. We were gonna get married in January, and I thought, um, of 1962, and I thought maybe I should consult with an accountant. And he says, you're gonna get married in December, <laughs> and the IRS is gonna pay for half of your honeymoon in Hawaii. <laughs> so we did, we got married in December of uh, 1961. Uh, that's an important year for you too. Yeah, we got married December the 16th. Oh, wow. <laughs> And then 12 months later, our child was born. And then uh, Millie decided that that was it. I was invited, uh, I got transferred to Hammett in 66. Um, Millie wouldn't, uh, March of 66, and Millie wouldn't take the kids out of school. So I had to drive back and forth to work for three months. <laughs> So I fought the sun going to work, and then I fought the sun coming home. Well, later we learned that that was probably a mistake because our kids didn't have any friends. Hmm. They only had each other for the summer. But uh, we've now been married uh, 55 years. Uh, 20, there's 24 grandchildren and 41 great-grandchildren. But I was invited to um, come to Rotary in 1967, January of 67. Rotary doesn't uh, say I became a member until July 1, because the club wouldn't send the money <laughs> to support a new member. Um, I became president in 1973-74. At that time, we had 40 members. And come June 30th, the following year, uh, we had uh, 80 members. Wow. So uh, later on, and we formed a breakfast club. And uh, I've been uh, an active member in Rotary uh, for a total of 50 years. Wow. As at the time uh, when Jim had the vision of uh, having all of our Southern California districts, uh, having the presidents going through a training session prior to starting their year as president of the individual clubs, I think there was uh, another district within uh, Southern California along with our district. We were doing training in our own district so then uh, when I become a nominee, it was an easy thing for me to support Jim and uh, help in the development of this program. Um, this is the first time I've, I've been back to Pets wow. uh, in the 40 years, wow. and uh, it's amazing to me the growth that has taken place. Now, uh, Jim Spears was the uh, director uh, during this period of time, and he contacted Jim and I, and we assisted him 
and having some expansion. He wanted to expand it within our district. And now I understand that uh, it's in most of the world. So it's a very satisfying thing. And luckily, Jim had that vision and uh, pursued it. There were a lot of obstacles that had to be overcome, uh, not only locally, but uh, from RI too. Uh, but uh, as you look at it today, uh, you can see that, and we, we get to talk to the individual presidents when they come back home, and uh, they're all fired up, and they're ready to go. So it's a wonderful program, and uh, I'm just thankful that I had an opportunity uh, in a small way to participate in it. Great. Well, thank you, Ray. Thanks for sharing that. Jim, coming back to you, the vision. How did the vision occur? Was it something you wanted to do beforehand, or something that just hit you one of those evenings when you go, we could do this? I, I have to take another step backwards. Sure. Go ahead. Um, in a 16-member club, uh, there's tons of work to do. What, what had happened is that I used to not stay for the program. One day I decided to stay for the program, and a man by the name of Walt Prey was the speaker that day, and for some reason I stayed. And he spoke on a subject called Service Above Self. And that then pulled the trigger for me. And uh, I wanted to do something. I didn't know what, but I knew I wanted to do something. So uh, therein lied the, the seeds of wanting to get involved. I then had the good fortune <clears throat> of listening to a man who later became president of Rotary International, Ed Cadman. And Ed Cadman said to me, Jim, you know there's only one object of Rotary? The object of Rotary is to encourage and foster the ideal of service, period. That's it. And I thought, oh, that's, that's interesting. Uh, I think that I now have um, uh, the, 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 the ground to start thinking a little different. And so uh, that, that, that happened. And I was very actively involved in the district. Uh, the, the PETS program itself, though, started when I was invited as a district governor nominee nominee to attend something called a Zone Institute in Hawaii. And uh, the Zone Institute was originally designed as a reunion of past district governors, and they did some minor training of the incoming governor. And so we were like backbenchers. Uh -huh. We sat at the, well, well, it was with me by the way. We <laughs> sat at the back of the room and we listened to all this and our eyes must have got that big around. <laughs> and, and the credit really goes to Willa. Because at that time she said, why aren't they training presidents like this? And why aren't they training presidents? I mean, they're training district governors. Why aren't we training presidents? Because, in all honesty, the presidents are the most important people in, in, in Rotary. Exactly. They're, that's where the rubber meets right. the road. Right. So with, with that thinking, uh, I, I need to also say, uh, we met a, a great man and his wife, Joe Jordan and Adele. He was, a, he was at District 526 Burbank. And his thinking was great. So. What had happened is I invited all of the district governor nominees, all the district governors elect, all the district governors to my home uh, to see a, a presentation that, that I made. And to the man, they agreed present like training was something that we wanted to do. So now we've got like six districts there, and we have 20 guys in my little living room. Uh, <laughs> That's great. And we're, 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 we built some excitement, but I invited Joe Jordan, and I invited Carl Swab. Carl Swab was in the Whittier Rotary Club, District 5320, and uh, uh, they, they were there, and I was going to sandbag them, in all honesty, to, to make them 
the chairman of this pets program. And so uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> um, we, we agreed that we would meet. Now, Roy uh, was the charter governor of District 533. And he was not involved in those very early meetings uh, because, and, and also there was a man by the name of Aaron Rose from District 528, which is Los Angeles. Uh, Aaron was challenged, uh, but he was then elected. Um, we then had a meeting of my class of governors over at Jolly Bachelor's house from District 530. And I'm leaving out the other O. Uh, and to the man, an hour later, they voted against it. Oh, really? <laughs> to the man. Wow. And I can remember very clearly, one of them grabbed me by the arm and said, Jim, you just don't really understand. <laughs> you know, people are not going to drive from Calexico <laughs> to Irvine. It's not going to happen. They're not going to drive from Morro Bay right. to Irvine for the President of Training Program. And um, it was one of the first times in my life that I wanted to have a drink. <laughs> I wanted to stop and get a drink. I didn't do that, but I went home and I talked with Ola about it. Two or three days later, I made the decision that we were definitely going to go through with this, one way or the other. I called Joe Jordan and asked him if he would help. I called Carl Schwab and asked me if he would help. Now, Joe was smart in the street. Carl was smart in the office. Both of them had been instructors at the International Assembly where they train the, the governor the elects. Yeah. Both of them had done it twice. So I had these two brain powers. I mean, these guys, they, they were first class all the way. But they knew exactly how to twist that little knife at me. <laughs> and, example, we're, we're now talking about doing this president-elect training program, and they're saying, uh, what kind of subject should we teach? And these guys are smart. They said, why don't we ask the club presidents? So I wrote a letter to all the club presidents and asked them to attend a meeting in Irvine to draft the, the, the criteria uh, for the president training program. So all these guys show up. Now, we had a, another meeting for doing that because we knew there was going to be some smart guys there and they were going to become the instructors <laughs> okay. of these classes. That's good. So, Makes sense. <laughs> so, so that's, that's how it really all started. But uh, they, they said, Jim, uh, who do you think should be the speakers? And of course, I had no clue because I don't know anybody. And they said, well, why don't we invite the president-elect of Rotary International? You know, that's good thinking. Yeah. Why wouldn't we invite the president elect of Rotary International. So I wrote him a letter. And sure enough, he writes back and said he would be happy to be there if the president uh, doesn't have him on another assignment. Well, I took that as a yes. I mean, I didn't read between the lines at all. I, I said, hey, that's, that's great. So he decides that he's going to be there. And then, of course, uh, the next one is, well, Maybe we ought to invite a past president of Rotary International. Sure enough, we invited Bill Walk. Bill Walk uh, was the other speaker. Uh, Keith Burnham was the next speaker, past vice president. Mm -hmm. And another great man, my, my true mentor in Rotary, was a man by the name of John Dalton. Uh, and, uh, we offered a total of eight classes. We offered a total of eight. They could only attend five. Okay. They knew that Rotarians love to complain. They will go to a district <laughs> conference, they will go to a president thing, and the first thing they do is they get in their car and they tell their friends how terrible it was. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> so true. we designed it so that they could only go to five so they'd have a positive complaint. So when they got in the car, they said, I wish I could have attended How to Memorize Names and Faces. Wow. 
right? I wish I could have attended budget and finance. I wish I could have attended how to build a team. But they didn't sign up for that. Because they couldn't. So, <laughs> so, they so our barn burner was the great Joe Jordan. And his speech just knocked them out, out of their socks. Mm -hmm. I mean, when they rang the bell to the league, these guys were higher than kites. <laughs> now you have to remember that this was the very first one. And it covered, uh, uh, like I said, from Morro Bay to Mexicali to uh, Las Vegas. Uh, we had 70% of the incoming Rotary Club presidents. And what we said to them, you are going to learn the success formula that never fails. The success formula that never fails. Mm -hmm. And we had a big banner, and it said, attitude is everything. Mm -hmm. So that, that first one, obviously, um, I, I get excited about it. There's, there's so many more little stories that could be told, but that true. It, it would not have happened, though, if it, once the core group, meaning Joe and, and, and Carl and myself, uh, put it together, and then we, we spread it out, and we then got all of these other club presidents involved. More importantly, we got the district governors of my class involved. Right. Now, I need to say that, that Roy, the 3-H program was just our health, hunger, and humanity. Right. His district was the first district in the Rotary world that was 100% contributors mm -hmm. to the health, hunger, and humanity program. Yeah. From each club. From every club in the district. Amazing. I, mean, I don't know if it's ever been done again. The world <laughs> about how important that is, but it was, yeah. it's that kind of leadership. Yeah. Aaron Rose from District 528, started the, the Rose Parade. Not many people know that Aaron, Aaron did that, and that was started our year. Hmm. So I'm trying to say that the leadership uh, of the governors themselves that year was unbelievably strong. Yeah, definitely. And they were mentally flexible. Hmm. So there were some serious discussions. <laughs> Sounds like the stars were all aligned for it to be successful. It, 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 it all worked. And yeah. the following year, um, it was decided that they were going to rotate uh, the responsibility. So the following year, District 532 again was in charge, and uh, a man by the name of R.L. Smith and myself put that together. Uh, and then from there, it went to uh, District 528. Oh, good. So that created the rotation then of the who's in charge of that. Correct. Okay. But that's all changed since then. Somewhat. Yeah. Not, not, not a Let lot. Let me tell you a little bit about these Southern California governors. Of course, we went to the International Convention, which was in Tokyo. And then together we traveled around the Orient. So we got to know each other quite well. And uh, a couple, a couple of years later, Clem Runoff, who was president our year, invited us to Australia. So we all went. And we spent two weeks in Australia, and then um, in near the Gold Coast, and then we spent 10 days uh, in New Zealand. So we traveled together, and then I'm not sure which one decided, says, well, aren't we going to have reunion to, <laughs> amongst us each year? So we started that. And uh, it, it, I think it gave us the companionship and friendship of, of all of them. And we did that and kept it up until they started to expire on us. But. When I think about why I became a Rotarian when I was invited, uh, I thought to myself, one person can make a dish difference in his community or her community right. in today's day and age. Mm -hmm. Collectively, we can do so much more. So that brought me into Rotary and gave me the association of quite a few of the other Rotarians. And right away after I became a member, 
um, one of the older members says, now the district conference is coming up and you need to attend. Well, I said, I'm working. Well, he says, you won't be working on Saturday, so you can go to the district conference on Saturday. And so I did. And I attended every district conference since then. Wow. But when I think back about the anxiety and the entertainment and the attitude of these presidents, to be presidents, coming back from the training, it made everything worthwhile. Do you think about it? Uh, if you're gonna run a marathon, you've got to practice to be able to withstand the 26 miles. Well, they throw you in as president and you really don't understand everything about being a club president. But with this training that you're doing this weekend, it's gonna give every one of them a good background on how to be a good club president. The club becomes whatever the president in his management abilities leads that club to. Yeah. And so it's heartwarming to have been able to come in during that particular area. Now Jim didn't tell you that there was resistance from Rotary. Maybe you need to touch on that. He, he a mentioned bit. a little bit of it. <laughs> no, actually, what, what, what happened is that you know, we've got a, we've got all these districts that, that want to do a personal training. Yeah. So I'm now communicating uh, with Rotary International in the service division, and I'm saying to him, we're going to do this personal training program, and these are the six districts that are involved. And uh, I receive a letter from Rotary International, an official letter, saying that. Uh, you cannot do a president-elect training program unless the, the clubs uh, vote. Each one of the clubs vote. So we had it, you know, all, we said sponsored by in all these districts. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, that's not a problem. I put hosted by, District 5320. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Perfect. And so, you know, they, they can't find fault with that. Right, right. So <laughs> that's one of those, the, the resistance was, from 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 the Rotary International level was really great, but uh, but but Jim Spear uh, uh, was on the board at that time, and he agreed that it was great. Now Clem Renoff, the, the incoming president, uh, made for sure that the story was told in the Rotarian magazine. So in the September. A 1978 Rotarian magazine uh, is the story of the very first pets program, and with that, uh, uh, I, I wrote a letter to the editor the following month, saying that if anybody wanted to start a president like training program, I'd be happy to uh, assist them. So Joe Jordan and I uh, started going to talk to these guys, right. like, like like the one in San Francisco uh, was the first one that we went to, and then in Missouri. That was, that was the far west, and then the show me. And, and, then, <laughs> That's great. and then, of course, uh, other things happened, and uh, uh, I was invited to join the staff of Rotary International, and so I did that for a year. But uh, with that, uh, it was a whole different story. I think <laughs> that. that sounds good, though. Um, now, did you imagine that it would take off to such yeah. extremes as it is today? Just about uh, everyone uh, has, has it. Car, Car, Carl Schwab, uh, before he agreed to work with, with me, we went to lunch, and he asked me the question, Jim, why are you doing this? And I told him straight out that I'm a very selfish, self-centered person. I want the very best club presidents that I could ever come across. The, we're going to have a year in Rotary, second to none. Wow. And then, of course, it spread uh, that the thinking. What, what, what I didn't know at the time is that Carl Schwab had leukemia. Mm. 
and I didn't know at the time why he couldn't attend all of these meetings with Joe and I. But after it was all over with, now if you remember, Carl did not attend the first pets. He was uh, down at La Jolla uh, getting a bone marrow transplant. But, I mean, that's the kind of dedication yeah. that Rotarians really have. I mean, that, that speaks volumes, not just for Carl, but it speaks volumes of Roy, it speaks of all of the Rotarians. It, it really does. Um, it, it becomes like oxygen. Yeah. I mean, we, we can't live without it. I mean, that, that's what Rotary really is for a whole bunch of us. Very true. Yeah. Well, look how yeah. training, look how training for the governors has evolved. Evolved also. Yeah. Well, know, what's interesting it. about that, it sounds like it started at Pettis, and that became right. part of a model now for training governors right. also. They went backwards the other way. So that is very interesting on that, for sure. Now, um, the overall results, my question would be, now that we are training presidents and training them annually, going through pets, do you see a change or a little evolution as far as Rotary is concerned? Has it benefited the way you thought it would be? I never, I never gave it a thought. All I wanted was my little guys. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. But it, it, well, it's, it's building a team. And, and, and Roy has made it real clear. The, the president is the guy that is the focal point. Without his leadership skills, the club is going nowhere. Mm -hmm. and, and as you know, there's clubs that are 50 members that are now seven members. And That's it true. happens because, yeah. because the leadership it is, the leadership. It is not there. Yeah, right. and, 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 and I happen to believe that there's a lot of clubs that are continuing to grow because of it. Same thing. Uh, yeah. And I'm very hopeful that, it, 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 that each one of the clubs will be stronger because of the PETS program. But in all honesty, the, the beginning of the present, I had no clue, absolutely no clue, that it was going to do that. Hmm. So well, we, got, we got some good, very good responses from uh, the future presidents coming and then what they got out of it. At the 11th hour, uh, one of the sergeant of arms, Tom Cross, and says, you know, we ought to do a survey to see what these guys think about the president -like training program and what's the strong points and what's the weak points. And so sure enough, within 24 hours, we now have a, an eight and a half by 14 survey with all of these questions on it about, you know, what was your favorite program? What do you like about it? What you don't like about it? Uh, who was your best instructor? Uh, and all that. So it, I mean, it, it just happened. <laughs> How else can I explain it? It sounds like I mean, a lot it, of good just, leadership. <laughs> it was just spontaneous. Yeah. Now, I, uh, <laughs> go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I, 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 I keep getting these little flashbacks. <laughs> now, Joe Jordan and I uh, are pretty much circulating and doing all that. And so, being in charge, they gave us the presidential suite. Hmm. And so now we've got this suite. I mean, this is a big, beautiful suite. <laughs> so we obviously have to have a little cocktail party at the suite, <laughs> right. you know, for, for our, our club presidents. So we do that. So now we're looking around, and there's a king-size bed. And that's it. <laughs> Joe's sleeping on one side, and I'm sleeping on the other side. <laughs> okay. So j j just before we go to bed, Joe comes over, he kisses me on the forehead, <laughs> okay. turns out the light, and he says, good night, Jim. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that one. <laughs> I was telling you, I was wired like that all night long, <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> waiting for him to make his move. <laughs> That's good. Finances were pretty tight at that time, and of course our spouses couldn't attend with us. Um, although both of them <laughs> gave great support, but, um, I had a room with one of the other future governors, and uh, that was uh, an experience also. <laughs> That's how it was designed. We, we matched uh, club presidents with the same size. In other words, the Long Beach Rotary Club was, was uh, with the Los Angeles Rotary Club. Right. They had something in common. If it's uh, a member of 20, with 150 members, exactly. they have nothing, nothing in, common. in common. But we did pair them up, which reminds me of another story. 
in uh, Joe and I flew to uh, Portland, Oregon, to help them start the pets program there. So we've now started that, and because uh, I was involved with it, they invited me to become one of the speakers. Now you have to remember, at that time, women were not invited. Women were not in Rotary. Right. So the women were not invited to the pets program. And sure enough, the women showed up. <laughs> now you have Alaska, uh, Washington, Idaho, all of these women are showing up and they're now supposed to share the room with a club president. <laughs> and so uh, Dick McClintock was his name, he was the chairman. He called all the presidents in and he said to them, gentlemen, you're going to have to ask your wives to leave. We've already had all the room assignments. And so we made arrangements for them to stay at the Red Lion Inn uh, about a mile from here. And so you talk about courage. <laughs> There's Dick McClintock standing there telling the women or the president that the wives are not invited. Wow. And it spelled out very clearly the wives, the spouse is not invited. Wow. <laughs> Good old Dick. He, he was great. That is the program that you actually had Clem as one of the speakers. Right. 40 years current time now, you have a, the new incoming RI president, international president, Ian, Ian Risey also from Australia, so right. I didn't want to know, how did you guys figure that one out? How coincidental was that? Was that? Well, here's something a little funny too. Um, ten years later, um, our governor hit the floor and, and died. Wow. And I had to take over. And the president is from Australia. Oh, really? Ten years later? Ten years later. Interesting. Uh, and another thing that was uh, a little unusual, uh, when I had my district conference, who shows up? Jim and Willa. <laughs> and of course, at that time, he's a director. Right. <laughs> so everything is, is kind of woven together. Like, uh, it seems that way. In, in Rotary, oftentimes, it's, it's more than what you're going to cross paths with somebody. It's good. Great my, partnerships. My, uh, I happen to believe very strongly that the district conference is is a is is the melting pot of Rotary, and it's it's very unfortunate that I'm seeing uh, success stories where they consider a district conference a success when there's 300 or 400 right. total attendance. Right. When when we were governors. It was not unusual, not unusual, to have 1,000, 1,500 hmm. attending. So that's changed. Yeah, and, that's and, and, and I don't know why it's changed, but I do know that that activity level has, has changed. Uh, and and I, I wish there was some way that, uh, that that could be changed. Yeah. It's like w one of the commitments that I asked uh, of my, my, my my club presence. I ask them, I ask them only one thing of you. I ask only one thing. I'll do anything you ask me to do. I'll be there for you 100%. I'm only going to ask one thing, and that you bring your board of directors to the district conference. Hmm. You bring your board of directors to the district conference, and therein lies the future of your club. There is your leadership for your future. You have to be a, a, a past director of the club to be club president. And so, yeah. very fortunately, I, I, I did get them to do that. And I still feel very strongly that That's great. If, 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 if the governor uh, would just ask that one thing. That is good. That is very sound advice because uh, district conferences are still definitely a challenge. Yeah. They have been for a while now. Well, you know, you know, um, as I look back on it, uh, when uh, when we had to do our official visit to the club and then write a letter back to them and a report to RI, uh, I just said that uh, Millie will go with me if she's invited. 
Every club except one invited her. Wow. And then Millie and our youngest daughter decided that um, they were going to put a recipe book together. And so, of course, all of the Rotarians at that time were male, so we solicited the, uh, the spouses to the club presidents to submit their favorite recipes. So um, that was an incentive for the spouse to want to go to the district conference. And then we put out the information that every spouse or every female that attended would get a copy of this uh, recipe book. I, I, I didn't know that. How many chicken recipes did you have? <laughs> Same ones they're using now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it stimulated uh, our, our attendance at, at the conference. It's a great idea. So, Well, for both of you, thank you very much. Uh, we're kind of running out of time here, but what I'd like to do is to actually, I'd like to have uh, Will and Millie, why don't you come on up here? Stand behind us and we'll get you guys on screen here. Because it sounds to me like this is Part of the story, part of the success of it all. I really mean it sincerely. It, it wouldn't happen without, without the wives. Agreed. And not just these two beautiful ladies, but it doesn't happen without them. Yeah. Uh, and, and it doesn't make any difference if it's a, in, in today's world, the spouse is male or female. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen without them. Yeah, you need the support. Well, for the both of you and all four of you, thank you very much for, uh, for attending. Uh, we'll get these things out to you shortly, but again, for the experience that you've had, for what you had, your vision, Rotary should be thankful because you've changed the world. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to see that it's continuing. What, what, what was really funny is that uh, a Rotarian came up to me not long ago and said, do you know, Jim, that every president of Rotary International, every trustee to the Rotary Foundation has now attended the PETS program? True. And I bet you know, it's true. <laughs> I cannot well, believe. That, and it's now required. <laughs> well, uh, the, uh, the PETS program uh, became an official program of Rotary International in, in 1989. I was on the board of directors. I was the chairman of the program committee. And the board then endorsed for the first time the PETS program as an official program of Rotary International, and it did not, unfortunately, it did not get written up and make it formal until the Council of Legislation right. approved that. Right. And then when the Council of Legislation approved it, then it became an official program of Rotary. Great. Now, was that the 1989 Council that it was approved? Um, the following year, or was the following Council? I think it was the following Council. Okay. I, I was, that was Singapore. Okay. And that's, that's when ladies were invited to be. That's to right. Join it, exactly. That is right. Yeah. <laughs> At my my district conference, uh, I had uh, the president of the Duarte Rotary Club speaking <laughs> at my 1978 district conference. Wow! Wow! Uh, 1979 mm -hmm. district conference. Right. And uh, that was probably the most controversial thing that I could have <laughs> ever done because women. We're not, right. not respected at that point. No, that's just true. But uh, then, of course, I'm now on the board, and we're now letting women, uh, through the council and legislation, yeah. become an official members of Rotary. Right. Right. Well, you know, uh, women in Rotary was not accepted worldwide. True, right? True. It uh, took a lot of persuasion. If it hadn't been for the government, and the Rotary Foundation and the threat that we would lose our tax-free status, mm -hmm. it probably wouldn't have happened. Yeah. And we almost had to beg uh, the Rotarians uh, throughout the world to support it mm -hmm. for us. And they, I think they reluctantly gave in. Yeah, the United States Supreme Court uh, ruled, it was a Jesse Unruh, Unruh ruling uh, about allowing uh, women uh, in Rotary that, that actually made it happen. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, again, a good glimpse of history, how it was done, 
who did it. This will become historical because now, like I said, 35,000 club presidents have to go through this process. The vision that um, Jim had and the assistance of Roy to make that all possible, and as you can see with the families all involved, this is what makes Rotary so special. With that, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.